it can be a little overwhelming starting out in Fallout 76. The tutorials are easy to miss and brief even if you do see them and there's, well there's not a lot to learn, but there's definitely some new stuff going on here on top of what was carried over from Fallout 4. Now that I've gotten my feet wet a little, I feel like I can offer a few tips for starting out. Just think of me as one of those responders, dead in some ditch and this is my pre-recorded message to the world. You know, if that gets you in the appropriate 76 spirit I guess, cause you're gonna be seeing a lot of those. Alright, tip number one, if you're on PC, you can go to the display settings and switch from borderless window to full screen. I've heard from a lot of people that this will improve performance significantly. Uh, I'm not sure if that's still the case, but regardless, just do that. Also, if you don't want to hear YouTubers like me blathering at you during character creation, uh, go to the sound and turn off voice chat. I think it's on auto to start with, but just turn it completely off. You can always turn it back on later. Now I mentioned this in my perk video, but it's worth bringing up again here. When you level up, you do not have to take a perk card associated with the special stat that you put the point into. So, as an example, you can put a point into strength, then when you're given the option to select a strength card, uh, instead hit LB or RB to look at the other cards you can choose instead. I suggest getting something like Lead Belly starting out, at least until... You follow the Overseer's path, at least up to Morgantown Airport. Be sure to do this. Getting to the Morgantown Airport and completing the associated quest there for the Overseer and for the Responders missions that are there can make your life a lot easier. Uh, first, because it unlocks a lot of useful schematics for your camp, like it unlocks most of the work bunches you need so you can repair your armor and repair your weapons and turn junk into raw materials. Second, because following the responder's quest at the airport can earn you a ton of stim packs and lockpicks, both crucial items for exploring, and in fact the tents around the airport are just super useful to look at as well, containing healing items and radaways. Like I'm not kidding, you get a ton of stim packs and lockpicks for completing these quests, so definitely do them. And all the stuff in the tents respawn as well, so if you really want to load up, you can come back to the Morgantown airport and loot the tents again, like after all the items have respawned. And if they're empty, then just change servers. Yes, you can fast travel in this game. It took me way too long to realize this, but there it is, clear as day. It costs caps to do it, but if you follow my next tip, then that really shouldn't be too much of a problem. Alright, this is the big one. We're talking inventory. Keep your inventory light. It's very easy to get over encumbered in this game. So you'll have to be smart regarding what you keep in your inventory. Your personal stash only carries 400 pounds of stuff and can also get filled up really fast. So I'll give you some tips on how to keep your inventory under control. This one sounds bad, but this is probably what you're going to be needing to do. Dump your ammo if you have a ton of it for a gun that you're not using. After you've been exploring a while, you'll start to get a lot of ammo, like a ton, a ton of ammo. Ammo has weight in this game, so eventually it's probably best that you just get rid of it instead of keeping any ammo you're not using. I mean like this here, this is ammo I actually do use, but I don't need almost a thousand rounds, so I'll just get rid of half of that. Enjoy it, ground. Uh, vendors won't buy ammo, so it's really the only thing you can do if you have too much. Only carry the guns and armor that you plan on using. It's best to stick with just one or two weapons you really like, because if you're wandering around, you will find a weapon station somewhere that you can use to repair them. Everything else, just sell them to vendors when you can. Basically, just sell everything to vendors when you get the option. Don't hoard stuff, just get rid of it. Now, aid items can be surprisingly heavy, especially when you start collecting a lot of them. I won't recommend stashing a lot of that stuff, but if you have a really excessive amount, like tons and tons of stim packs, I'd stash a portion of them. You can probably get by with 20 stims instead of 40. Tinker stations can convert materials into bulk materials, and doing this basically just lowers their weight in your stash, so do it. Anything to give yourself a little more space is very useful, especially when it comes to materials, which can be very heavy when you collect a ton of them. Otherwise, ABS, always be selling. Find some duplicates, sell them. Armor you don't need, sell it. Chems you're probably not going to use, sell it. Just sell stuff. You can always find vendors in town train stations. They pop up in other places, but if you see a station, you will find a vendor. 
Now, if the idea of interacting with other people in a Fallout game scares you, or, you know, you just don't want to deal with them, then you have options. A lot of options, actually. If someone's giving you trouble, you've got two main options. You can block them, so they can't interact with you. Or you can switch servers. Switching servers is uh, it's a little more time consuming, but it allows you to take your chances with a whole new group of people that you'll probably never see. Honestly, because these options are in the game, PvP is not really a danger outside of the PvP areas that sometimes pop up. It's very much an opt-in kind of thing, and from my experience, most people choose to opt out. If you find a place you'd like to explore, but you see on your map that there's already someone else running around in there, then you should probably just switch servers. It's possible to explore areas that have already been picked dry by other players, and that's just a drag. Puzzles are already solved, any special loot has already been looted, or worst of all, some of the puzzle parts have been restored, but not all of them, so even if you're attempting the puzzle, it won't make any sense. Here's an example. On this bridge, you can find a key halfway across, which lets you open a door on the east side. Behind the door is a clue towards a second key that opens the west door, but the west door was already open. I already explored it because someone else had already been through here. Sometimes you won't find a key because someone else took it, or a note with a password on it that won't be found. It just adds an extra layer of confusion on top of everything, so follow my advice, and if you see somebody wandering around another area, if you see that like all the doors are open or all the enemies are dead, just switch servers if you want to properly explore a location and don't want to wait or come back later. Alright, I'm going to quickly talk builds. Two-handed weapons with perks are very, very powerful. Ammo isn't really an issue in this game past the early goings, but even ignoring that, like you're not just doing this to conserve ammo, two-handed close-range weapons is just a very viable strategy. Just look at this, with a 3 star perk card that boosts 2 handed weapon damage, I can take on enemies that are just way higher level than me with relative ease. Another plus is that dudes with rocket launchers will put them away at close range, making this the safest way to take them on. Alright, we're almost done. Let me quickly talk about camping. Appalachia is a very hilly, rocky, steep, uneven grounded place, so attempting to build a moving settlement on it is just a waste of time. Having a Minecraft-like house isn't necessary, because like at night you're not going to get attacked by monsters or anything. People can't steal stuff from you if that's in your personal stash, and I don't really mind if people use my armor and weapon tables if they so happen to wander by. So if you plan on moving around a lot, just plop all your tables on the ground and use them that way. Camping has a lot of other uses, uh, mainly regarding exploiting turrets, like killing enemies that way, but I'll get into that later for a more advanced kind of guide. Okay, one last tip. If you're tired of getting irradiated and want some help in that department, there's a hazmat suit that protects you from radiation down south from Vault 76 in the power plant. You can find it by going up the catwalk and behind the main entrance, going all the way to the top to the roof, there's a separate little office area you can find it in. Having something to protect you against radiation is always useful. And last, because this is a Fallout game, remember, war never changes. Wait, but I heard war has changed. I don't know, but that's all I got. Got any good tips of your own? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and take it easy.